Hi, everybody. Welcome to Live Spirit Chat. Live Spirit Chat is your chance to participate in a group teaching session and get your questions answered about your spiritual development, developing your spiritual path, your spiritual practices, and all kinds of things related and in between, such as practicing bulk magic, candle magic, divination, and tarot, working with your spirit guides and ancestors, so on and so forth. Live Spirit Chat happens in a private location almost every Saturday at 12 noon, United States Central Standard Time. And at the beginning of Live Spirit Chat, I like to take early bird questions. So every week I allow folks to submit early bird questions via Instagram. And I'm going to go ahead and jump into those early bird questions right now at the top of the hour. And then I will be taking live questions here in our private location. So let me take a look at Instagram and see what kinds of questions have been submitted. So somebody is asking, what is a good banishing oil? So let me start off by saying that most spiritual practice practitioners or spiritual crafters who create oils create their own version of a banishing oil. So those are gonna go by different names. There's going to be different varieties. Many times they're just gonna be called a banishing oil. Um, Madame Pamita makes an oil that I really love, which is a reversing negativity oil. She also makes a release and restore oil that I really love. Those oils are kind of a variation on the banishing because what they're assisting you with is getting rid of unwanted energies, unwanted influences, assisting you with releasing that which you no longer want, which could be bogging you down or which could threaten to turn into energetic or spiritual blockages, assisting you with actively releasing those things that you are aware are having a negative effect on you. That is one type of banishing. The reversing negativity oil is typically, so reversing work and this kind of bulk magic is typically, or it was traditionally for the purpose of reversing negative energies and sending them back to the sender or back to the source. However, I don't always use reversing products in that way. In my opinion and in my experience, reversing products can also be used to reverse a situation or to reverse my own energy, right? So much like turning your attitude around, I may use a reversing oil in, or a reversing negativity oil in order to turn my own energy around. When I notice that I'm getting off kilter or I'm getting ungrounded or I'm getting too negative or something is affecting me in a way that um, is starting to bog me down or I'm allowing something to affect my mental state or affect my emotional state in a way that's going to um, work against me or a way that's going to be unproductive, right? Or a way that's going to hold me back in some way. So that's a couple of examples of how I use um, banishing oils and some variations on banishing oils. Now, another variation of banishing oil that I really love is the Van Van oil. Conjured Cardia makes my favorite Van Van oil. And much like the way that I use a reversing negativity oil, I will also use Van Van oil for a form of reversal. Van Van oil is traditionally for taking um, bad luck and turning it into good luck, right? So what we're talking about here is actually taking unwanted energies and influences and turning the situation around. It's for banishing what you no longer want or what no longer serves you and turning it into good luck, turning it into blessings. So a lot of the work that we do as spiritual workers involves taking the energy or working with the energy of clients and transmuting it or transforming it, right? So for instance, I would use Van Van oil a lot when I was doing readings at public events. Um, 
And the reason that I would do that is because people come to me with a lot of heavy problems, of course, um, come to me with a lot of challenges, a lot of heavy emotions, a lot of complicated issues and challenges in their lives. And using the Van Van Oil is one of the conscious ways that I work to transmute or alchemize their energy. So assist them with taking their challenges, taking their problems, taking their unwanted energies and turning them around, turning them into some blessings, some guidance, some good luck, some protection, you know, whatever is needed to carry them forward in a positive direction. As a spiritual worker, I am a vessel that transmutes and transforms energy, especially when I'm working in such close contact with clients. So those are some ways that I use Van Van oils and some variations of uh, banishing oils. Now, if you want to make your own banishing oil, then you could do so um, pretty simply. One of the ingredients that I would prefer for a banishing oil would be some strong fiery ingredients, some ingredients that are going to um, break up energy or transmute energy. So we're looking at real um, strong fiery sort of vibes for that to um, kind of burn things away and transform them. I like cinnamon for that. You could make a really a simple banishing oil using cinnamon and hot peppers, for example. Um, hot peppers are a very traditional ingredient for all kinds of banishing or sending things away from you. Um, if you are going to use really hot peppers or fiery ingredients such as that, then you're also going to want to be really careful about uh, getting that on your skin. So that goes with all kinds of banishing oils. Some of them may not be formulas that you want to get on your skin. Other ingredients that may be useful in banishing oils would include lemongrass. Um, you can, I, I really would just prefer cinnamon and hot peppers. And you can make this oil pretty easily. Just use whatever oil you have around. A lighter oil may be more beneficial, but if all you have is olive oil, then go ahead and get a small jar, cover up some hot peppers and some cinnamon in some olive oil, let it sit for two weeks. After two weeks, strain the ingredients out and repeat for two more weeks, do that three times. If you want the oil to be stronger, then you're going to want to slightly macerate or chop up the hot peppers before you put them in the oil. You can do the cinnamon sticks whole. If you wanted to add some extra nuances of releasing blockages or breaking through obstacles, for example, then you may want to use some coffee, black coffee grounds or whole beans. And if you want to add some uplifting vibrations or just a kind of a higher note, then the lemongrass would be a re really useful ingredient in that as well. So I hope that gives you some ideas about banishing oils and their nuances, how to use them and some different variations of banishing oils. I believe I just have one more question on Instagram and then we will jump into our live questions. So you can feel free to submit your live questions now and have them wait in the queue and I'll address them at the appropriate time or you can wait till I'm done with this next Instagram question. Okay, so I have a new follower from Italy. And if, you, if you're out there, you know who you are and thank you for getting in touch. And they are asking about, so they've had some changes in their um, spiritual connection during lockdown. We all know um, that things were particularly bad in Italy for a while. So I am sending, um, sending well wishes, sending, sending blessings to you for that. May you continue to be protected. May you continue to be blessed. May you continue to be healthy and well. And their question is, during lockdown, I started my spirituality again. In meditation, I would have visions and travel very easily. Now that I'm back to work, I don't experience that anymore. Often I fall asleep or I feel scattered and my energies are not the same. Very frustrated. 
I hope you have some insight. Okay, so here's the thing. There's a couple of things going on here from my perspective. One, one of the things that really sticks out to me is that they say their energy is scattered. Um, so this tells me that they need some grounding. They're probably stressed or they're probably literally scatter, scattering their energy, like exerting too much energy in too many different directions. This could mean that work is too demanding, for them, this could mean that life is too demanding for them right now. Things are stressful out there, right? So if you're feeling like your energies are scattered and you're unable to focus on your spiritual practice the way that you were before, or you, more specifically, you're unable to call upon or draw upon your strong centered spiritual center or your um like the center of your personal power i always envision it being here it is here if you're unable to really like gather your energy gather your um uh, your mental and your energetic focus and come at this from a very focused and collected and sort of um stable position then you need some grounding right so that's one way to that's one way to kind of look at this is another perspective on grounding this is another perspective on scattered energy um, scattered energy is going to make it difficult for us to focus because it's literally as if we are scattering pieces of ourself around the world we're giving things away to other people to other things to other events to other tasks and we aren't taking enough time to release the energies that don't belong to us that we're exposed to every day and or to call back to us that which we are losing that which we're giving out so our energy is very much like our physical health we need time to restore it we need time to um we need time to recenter, recollect, restore, refresh, to call back what belongs to us and to release what we no longer need. This is very easily and very simply done through some grounding techniques. So the first thing that I would say is to try some grounding and specifically, I mean, if you're feeling this way, I would recommend it at least once a week, but also try it precisely before you begin your spiritual practice. So before you sit down to actually practice. Now, the other thing is a lot of people have been experiencing all kinds of um, new developments in their spiritual awakening, new developments in their spiritual connection and their spiritual practice um, during lockdown and during this time. It's my firm belief that part of the purpose of this time is to bring us back to that center. Of course, you know, I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. We're going through a seriously destructive time in history and a destructive place um, in space in order to take us to a higher level, but we're not, we can't escape the destructive part of it. So I under, I know that it's difficult, I'm going through it too, but I firmly believe that a lot of, that, that this whole period is for the purpose of assisting us in healing and assisting us with our spiritual development, assisting us with um, developing to a higher level as humans, as, as people, taking our consciousness and our, um, our spiritual connection to a higher level evolving in those ways. So I don't think that it's, you know, random. I don't think that it's by chance that a lot of people are experiencing these kinds of things, but it's also normal and natural that as you return to work or as you return to normal life, whatever that is, you know, um, we may not ever have the same normal again. So let's keep that in mind. Normal is um, an objective word. And the only constant in life is change. And we're probably never going to go back to the same normal that we were used to before. We're going to have a new normal now. Anyway, 
as you are returning to work and returning to responsibilities, returning to a busier life, you're going to find that your spiritual connection is not the same as it was when you, you were less busy, when you had more time alone, when you had more protective space, when you weren't exposed to so many different energies and so many different people, and there weren't so many things to take away your energy or to uh, attract your focus or attract your attention or attract your, um, attract your thoughts, attract your mental focus, right? So one of the lessons in this is for us to understand what are those things in our lives that are taking away from us in a detrimental way and what can we do about it are there things that we need to cut out of our lives are we realizing through this process that there are things in our lives that are really um not good for our overall intentions or our overall goals or our true highest priorities and is there something that we can do about it is there a way that we can remove ourselves from some of those even further or make permanent changes um, that we wouldn't have otherwise made if we didn't have these realizations or these experiences that led us to notice these these um nuances in our life Oh, it's raining. That is great. It's raining. Um, sorry, I'm just, I face a window right on the other side of, of the computer. So um, it's easy for me to see something outside and be a little bit distracted by it. But I was just talking before live spirit chat about how it's been so hot here. I'm in Texas and of course it's hot in the summer, but it's been a very, very hot summer and we were expecting some rain and it'll probably cool things down and calm things down a little it's very refreshing for us to have rain in the summer so thank you rain i'm welcoming the rain and getting back to the live spirit chat instagram question um so i think that it's pertinent to assess how your work life is affecting your stress and you know, assess whatever is best for you in the circumstance. Can you change the way that you're dealing with stress? Can you change the way that you're dealing with work? Or is it a bigger thing? Do you need to make a change with your work overall? Like, um, do you know what? So the, the point is really to assess what is it within this pattern that you have some agency over that you can um that you can take some responsibility for or that you can take charge of or that you can control to a certain extent the the universe wants you to be a co-creator but also wants you to recognize you're not the creator you're a co-creator so take a look at the situation and determine what parts of it are things that you can control and that you can be responsible for and what parts of it are not, what parts of it are, are things or um, circumstances or details that you need to release to the universe and allow the universe to control. But the overall thing is that these changes that have transpired in our lives recently, the way that our lives have been rearranged, offered us a wonderful opportunity to examine how how our daily activities, how the things that we're giving our time and our energy and our vibrancy to are affecting us. And if we're getting something back from those things, that equals what we're giving to them. Are we getting the fulfillment we need? Are we getting the nurturance we need? Are we getting the connection to the world that we need, the connection to the universe that we need? Are our spiritual, mental, and emotional needs being met through the things that we are giving our energy and our time to? And if not, then how can we make some changes? So that's the overall thing that's going on for all of us. And I think in this issue with, you know, my spiritual, going back to this question, my spiritual development has really, you know, take kind of derailed since I'm not um, sequestered anymore. And since I'm now back at work, it's like, well, you know, 
you have to assess, is there a lifestyle adjustment that needs to be made? And what, what are your top priorities? What are your highest truths? Um, what, what is your soul really need? Um, what is your higher purpose? What do you really need in your life? Not only to be fulfilled and um, to be happy and joyful and content in life, but also to fulfill um, a bigger purpose and also to participate actively in your spiritual evolution. So there may be something going on there where some things are out of alignment, right? There may be something that is out of alignment that needs to be reassessed and it could be small or it could be large, but you have to figure out what is within your capability to take some control over. And then the other part of this is really simple. Like our energy, our spiritual connection and our energy is certainly going to be affected uh, depending upon what we're, uh, what we're exposed to, what other people were exposed to, how many people were exposed to, um, what kinds of situations and circumstances we're exposed to, how much time we have to spend doing time doing things like sitting in traffic or sitting in strange cafeterias or um, commuting in public spaces where there's a lot of energy or distractions or influences around us, right? Like all of these daily activities, they affect us spiritually and energetically. So we also can see very directly through these lifestyle changes and comparing, you know, how we felt during these specific times, we can see very clearly how things affect us. Um, and maybe it's just that you need some more time to yourself. Maybe you just need to carve out some more protected, um, secure, personal, spiritual time specifically for your practices where you really feel um, protected and secure. Or maybe you need to set up some stronger boundaries of energetic and spiritual protection when you're going out into public places. So really kind of contemplate all of these aspects and determine, you know, what's working for you, what's not working for you. And as I've said, um, what you have some agency over and what you need to release to the universe. So let's see what questions I've got here. And I'll also take a moment to think about if I have special announcements for Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services. If you're not familiar with me, I am Miss Melinda. I am owner and operator of Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services, as well as MissMelinda.com. And I don't have any in-person events coming up, <laughs> but... <clears throat> I do have a personal sabbatical coming up. I have a birthday coming up and I have a sabbatical coming up. I am taking a break from individualized spell services, but I will be offering many, many other things. I will still be available for readings, for teaching, for coaching, for one-on-one -on -one guidance and mentoring. I'm still offering all of our wonderful services through Mystic Membership, through our Patreon community. Everything that we do there is going to continue. This includes group spiritual services, full moon services, new moon readings, and so many other things. I have workshops in store. I'm going to be focusing more on those things during my break from the spell services. We have a full moon service coming up in less than two weeks. So soon I will announce what that service will be all about, who it will be dedicated to. This full moon group spiritual service is open to the public as they always are. And I will be offering an in-depth virtual course on shadow work, delving into what is shadow work and giving, um, giving really thoughtful, planned out ways to delve into your shadow work, providing you with systems and approaches for delving into your shadow work and providing you with homework and exercises for doing this work, giving you a really strong framework and solid foundation to 
launch from for doing this deep inner work and offering you ways to really use shadow work to your advantage to alchemize and transform the energy into your life to create the reality and the future that you are seeking to create to be an active co-creator in your own reality that's the workshop that is coming up through mystic membership in our patreon community very very soon we have been working on grief work for two or three months now it has really been um, a bigger project than we anticipated it has been um it's been intense and that's good that's okay um, but we're going to be wrapping it up so anyone who hasn't finished the grief work we need to wrap it up we need to kind of let let it be where it is and close that off so that we can move into deeper things but that's what we've been doing for the last few months i've been offering one-on-one -on -one sessions with my mystic members working um, in depth on grief work which in in itself is a form of shadow work but we've really gone over personal relationships and situations in our lives that have caused us grief and loss and we've done some really good hands-on work to address that and to complete our emotions to complete our experiences in those situations of grief and loss so we're wrapping that up and moving forward that's it for my personal announcements for now so let's see what questions we have here Good question. I tried to plan spells around moon phases and astrological events, but when the day arrives, I might feel tired or stressed. Is it more important to work the spell on the correct day or to be in the best psychological state? Thank you. It is much more important to be in the best psychological state and not just the best psychological state, but the best energetic state as well. So you need to practice your magic and your spell work on the day when you feel the most energetically vibrant, when you feel the strongest and the most centered and when you know that your energy is aligned to complete that spell. Um, for that reason, the way that I schedule my spell work is really specific, specifically for this reason, because it may be the same for me, just because it's the correct moon phase or the correct the moon phase or the correct astrological hour doesn't mean that it's the correct time for me. So for example, um, the full moon is the full moon is an interesting time for me in which the energy kind of builds for the three days following the full moon. Oftentimes I feel more intensely connected to the moon and I feel the energy of the moon more powerfully on the day after the full moon. So for my personal schedule for spell casting and for spiritual work, I leave some flexibility. I never make a hard and fast rule that it has to be on these specific days or in these specific astrological phases. It's much more important that I am aligned. In my, um, in my reporting policies, you'll see a line that says something like, spells are scheduled on a weekly basis and then they're performed on the day that best suits the energies as informed by intuition and energetic connections. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. It needs to be the right day for me. The, the stars need to be aligned for me as an individual rather than just specifically on a moon calendar. So that's what I recommend to you. <clears throat> I have had events take place that I either knew were coming or saw hints or flashes of in advance. Can you speak to how to know if it's a premonition or something I'm creating or bringing forth? It could be pieces I remember from a past life. So to kind of go backwards, um, this thing about it feeling as if it's pieces that you're remembering from a past life um 
I'm going to try not to get too meta here, right? So the thing is, the reason that I and many people believe that psychic abilities even exist or even possible is because time is not linear. Time doesn't go in a straight line, right? Um, time exists all at once. Um, it goes in a circle, not a straight line. So different dimensions, different lifetimes even, they are happening all at once. They exist at one time. Um, much like, you know, the concept of God is something that is too large for us to really grasp with our human minds. The concept of time um, is really too much for us to grasp with our human minds. But the reason that you feel as if you are remembering something from a past life is because it's happening now. Right, so it could be that a premonition feels to you as if it's coming from a past life because it's like you're experiencing different time periods at once. You're pulling something from the past or something from the present all at once while you're here now. And that is in a very general way, in a very simplified way, how we believe that psychic abilities work on one on one level, right, from one perspective. So what's happening is that, you know, you're, you are experiencing time differently than you experience time when you're in your um, just average daily mundane activities, when you're not aware of this. Um, so that's one piece of the puzzle. <clears throat> it is very unlikely that you are bringing these things into fruition. You are having premonitions. And the reason that I know that and I can say it so matter of factly is because this is a very, very common experience that many people have. And before you learn to really trust your premonitions and before you learn to really understand and feel the way that your psychic abilities and your precognitive abilities work, you will always have the question, did I make that happen or am I really psychic? And it's the, the basic thing that's happening there is that you're just doubting that you're psychic and you're, you're, it's just a normal natural conclusion that our minds jump to. Am I responsible for this? So there's some guilt involved in that as well. But I'm, I'm sure that there's something else going on there that maybe someone who is really into um, the biology of the brain or somebody who is in really into quantum physics, something of this nature could explain to us in a different way because I'm sure that there's some other mechanism in our brains and in the way that we perceive time, which automatically makes us jump to the conclusion that it couldn't possibly be that I'm precognitive. Instead, it must be, did I make this thing happen? Um, I see this over and over again. People people question this constantly. And it it, it like 98% of the time it turns out that you're precognitive, you're having psychic experience. Um, you're you're not making these things happen. Um, if you were making these things happen, then you would be one of the most powerful witches that ever existed. And you would learn how to use that. And you, you know, that would be a whole nother story. So just think about that. If you could really make all of these events happen in your life, how would that affect you? How would that change your life? Wouldn't there be so many other things that you would make happen as well, just by thinking about them? If you could make everything happen just by thinking about it casually, in this way, think about how different your life would be, how many things you would have made happen. Okay, so that's some evidence for you as well. Now, um, how to know when this is happening. Simple answer, pay attention. It's all about mindfulness. The first thing that you need to do in order to um, teach yourself when this is happening or in order to recognize when this is happening is to start practicing mindfulness. So, um, you know, being mindful of how you're feeling, what you're thinking, what sensations you're having throughout your day. When you start to become really mindful of what's going on in your mind, 
what's going on in the different layers of your thoughts throughout the day, what's going on in the different layers of your emotions throughout the day, what kinds of sensations you're having when you are exposed to different kinds of events, different kinds of people, different kinds of energies, and then what kinds of sensations you're having mentally, emotionally, physically, when you're experiencing these kinds of intuitions or precognitive um, insights, right? So then you can begin to recognize what you felt exactly or what you experienced exactly when this precognition happens. And then over time, you'll recognize when it happens again, and you'll know the difference between having a, a precognitive insight or having anxiety or having a fear or having a message from your spirit guide or whatever the case may be, or having your own emotion or your own thoughts. So really it's all about paying attention, but it's about paying great attention. And it's about learning how to implement this practice of paying attention into your daily life so that you begin to live more and more mindfully just as second nature. And this is really the strongest way to unlock and understand your intuition and your psychic abilities. You just have to understand, know thyself, right? Know thyself. That's what it's all about. So you just have to understand how your thoughts are working, how your energy is working, how your emotions are feeling, how your body is feeling. All of these things play a role in giving you clues and informing you um, when you are having intuition or psychic connection or spiritual connection. Will Shadow Work Workshop be available only for Patreon? and not non-members. No, uh, thank you for asking that. Eventually I'm going to make that shadow work workshop available for sale as a standalone workshop outside of Patreon. So it'll be available for the Patreon members first and they'll probably get some perks like some one-on-one um, -on -one work with me in addition to the workshop. But then I'm going to offer an expanded version of it for sale standalone. So great question, thank you for asking. Another question. I have become aware of a traumatic past life. These events are affecting me today. How can I begin to heal from them? Are there any techniques or practices that might be helpful? Yeah, I know that there are. Um, I, I am not a, an expert on past life work. That's something that I'd like to know more about, but I'm totally fine with acknowledging when there is an area that is not my expertise and this is not my expertise. Um, some ways that I would, like if I were experiencing this, some ways that I would approach past, like healing from past life trauma would be to approach spiritual journey from the perspective of core shamanism. So perhaps to, I mean, since I'm not that experienced with it, and since you, I would recommend having a guide to assist you in this kind of shamanic journey or this kind of spirit journey. I guess I prefer to call it a spirit journey. I think that you would need someone to assist you in that. So I may go to a practitioner that um, practices core shamanism or somebody that practices a type of spirit journey who would take you to, um, who would take you to a version of yourself that's associated with your past life or who would take you to your past life or who would take you to whatever world, right? So in Core Shamanism, we call it worlds, whatever world you need to go to in order to work on that healing. So that may develop or unfold in a variety of ways. Um, maybe there's a part of yourself like a like maybe you need to do some soul retrieval, like you've left a part of yourself in your past life and you can travel to get to that part of yourself and to heal that part of yourself. Um, I would probably do dream work and I would, if I were going to do this alone, then I would start with dream work 
And I would really set some very clear intentions and some clear boundaries about it. And the first thing that I would do is ask a guide to assist me with a healing dream, to assist me with, to show me what I need to know about healing from this past life trauma or what I need to unlock in order to heal from this past life trauma or, you know, remove myself from this past life trauma. And I would ask for them to assist me with that healing as well. And I want to, no, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Um, okay, let me not look at your questions and jump ahead. Let me finish what I'm saying. Um, so about the dream work, dream work is really intensive. Dream work is not necessarily something that you're just doing when you're passive. Your body might be passive, your day-to-day -day consciousness might be passive, but your subconscious and your mind can be very, very active when you are, are doing dream work or dreaming in general. And it can be just as energetically and spiritually draining as any other kind of of magic or energy work or intensive spiritual work, right? So if you do want to do some dream work, if that's something that calls to you, that resonates with you, and that comes naturally to you, then you need to be mindful of when you do that and you need to set up some um, some safety precautions for yourself. Like only do that when you're feeling very strong energetically, um, when you feel protected energetically, when you feel that your guides are with you, when you're not too overly vulnerable, when you're not too overly stressed. So approach it just as seriously as you would any other kind of intensive spiritual work. Those are just examples of things that I would personally do if I were to approach this on my own or for myself. Um, as I said, I'm not an expert in past life connections or experiences. It's something I'll probably learn more about at some point along with you know the long list of other things I wanna learn about. Um, but I recommend that you contact somebody who is. I've always been interested in um, the past life hypnotism that people do. Um, but I would probably approach it more from the perspective of, of core shamanism. I don't know of anyone who can guide you on the journey, but I can send you recommendations. I, I, have, um, I have some information that I think will be useful for you that can connect you to a database of worldwide practitioners who do this kind of work. And it's a very reputable source by Sandra Ingerman. She's a very well-known practitioner of core shamanism. So drop me a line by email and let and remind me that I said I'd give you this information and I'll send it to you. The other question is, is it necessary? Is it always necessary to take weed or LSD to do a shamanic journey? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Most, um, most practitioners of core shamanism are not uh, taking uh, hallucinogens or psychedelics during your average practice. You may do that to do a more intensive practice, but it's certainly not required. I mean, I do all kinds of spirit journey on my own and I'm not on drugs when, I, when I'm doing it. I'm not saying that I'm anti-psychedelics. I'm not, I'm pro-psychedelics, um, but I'm not, you know, I'm not tripping every day. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I do like, for instance, the channeled readings that I do, I travel to spirit realms, I travel to other dimensions, I travel to astral planes, and this this is spirit journey, and, and you know, you can call it shamanic journey, and you can call it spirit journey. This is spirit journey where I'm going to communicate with other entities, um, ancestors, the deceased, gods and goddesses, etc. Um, where I'm going to communicate with clients, where I'm going to communicate with their spirit guides, with entities that only exist in the spirit realm or only exist in um, different astral planes. And I'm doing that completely sober. You do, it's about putting yourself in a trance-like state and developing the tools and the skills and the connection necessary in order to 
go on that journey in order to allow the part of your brain to take over, which is naturally there. Like we, we have the capability to do these things already built into our brain. And we have the capability to learn how to tap into those parts of our brain and allow them to take over and guide us to these connections and guide us to these capabilities. Um, and the reason that LSD, for example, or any kinds of psychedelics or hallucinogens can be so helpful is because it teaches our brains how to go to that place. Um, and it teaches our brains, um, teaches our brains how to go to that place and it teaches our brains how to get there again more easily. So it, it actually creates neural pathways. It creates new neural pathways, which are grooves in our brain. They're grooves in our brain. So, you know, obviously I'm not a scientist. There's going to be, um, there, there are much larger explanations that can be given here, but a neural pathway is like a road well-traveled in your brain. And, the, the roads that are well traveled are the ones that we're most familiar with, obviously, the ones that we go to all the time. And we don't go to these spirit planes all the time. So the, the reason that hallucinogenics can be helpful in assisting us with this is because they can help our brain create a new groove so that we can get to these places more easily or so that we can even find our way to this place in the first, in the first place. Um, because otherwise it is a lot of work and it takes a lot of time to build those grooves ourselves. It's like if we, you know, it's like taking a dirt road instead of a freeway, you know, we have to actually um, wear that road down and we have to do it consciously and over and over and over again before it becomes something that is easy for us to traverse, easy for us to get to. And you can do it. I have done it, but I'm just giving you a little bit of a background information about why people use psychedelics. It's not necessary, necessarily um, needed in order to get there, but it's like a super highway that can help to reprogram your brain. And then um, there's a lot of scientific evidence that it actually opens people up to these psychic experiences and it helps you um, strengthen these kinds of psychic and spiritual connections but that doesn't mean that you need to do it all the time it's not something you have to rely on in order to take these kinds of journeys or do this kind of work and it's something you have to be really careful of if you're somebody who has any kind of underlying mental health issues or any kind of underlying um, yeah, mental health issues or tendencies towards um, mental illness, right? So it's also not something that you just play with for fun. It's something that you do with a lot of intention and a lot of consciousness. Okay, so the last comment is, I'm into Jungian ther therapy. And yes, dream work is very intense. Yeah, dream work is very intense and you know, it can be just as intense, intense as shadow work. Um, it's all, it all can be very intense. So any of this kind of work, you're gonna wanna go into with strong intention and um, you know, strong spirit, strong body, strong mind and set up good safety nets for yourself and you know, respect the space that you're going into, respect the energy and time that you're going to need to commit to it, and also respect that you're going to need recovery time. Okay, so thanks so much everyone for being here today. It was a pleasure to talk with you. I really enjoyed our conversation today. Really excellent questions. Much, much love to all of you. Much appreciate your energy and everything that you bring to Live Spirit Chat. Don't forget, Live Spirit Chat happens almost every Saturday at 12 noon United States Central Standard Time. And I do accept early bird questions on Instagram and Live Spirit Chat is always archived on YouTube so that you can check it out at a later date. Thanks so much. Be blessed, be well, be healthy.